in this example, the, nu the numerator, as you guys are looking at this, the numerator is kind of quickly, easily factored, Michelle. We can just factor out the x, and I'd get x minus 3. Right? You're just factoring out the greatest common factor. That's relatively basic as far as factoring. Here I see two terms. I'm thinking, I automatically think it's either factoring a GCF or it's difference of two squares. There is a difference of two cubes over there, but we'll get to that later. So it's either one of, usually, typically, it's usually one of these two methods. Well, here they don't have any common factors, so I'm going to look at difference of two squares. Is the first term squared, Cassie? Yes. Second term squared? Yes. It's a difference? Yes. So I can do difference of two squares. So the difference of two squares would look like this. Oh, I'm sorry, 3 plus x. Now the problem is, though, that really does, that's not exactly the same as what my numerator is, right? So it doesn't really divide out. So another way I could do this, now I could actually factor um, out a negative from here. If I notice I want to get this to be negative and that to be positive, I could factor out a negative um, from this term. But that might be a little confusing. So why don't we do that from the get-go? Why don't I just factor, if I rewrite this, so I rewrite this as a negative x squared plus 9, correct? And I factor out a negative. That means I'm dividing out a negative. I'm not, re I'm not changing the problem. I'm just dividing out a negative. So therefore, I have x times x minus 3 all over x, or negative, times x squared minus 9. Now that's in a format that you guys are much more familiar with, right? And now I can say x times x minus 3 all over a negative times x minus 3 times x plus 3. Now I see that, oh, OK, I have two dis discontinuities. x cannot equal, or sorry, x equals, um, x equals, when x equals 3, that is my whole. And when x equals negative 3, that is my asymptote. Hold on a second. So my simplified answer is x over, or I could have a negative x over x plus 3. OK? And so again, since the x plus 3 stays, that's why my asymptote is at negative 3. Question? Um, the negative sign, does it not change x plus 3? Hmm? Yeah, you could distribute the negative if you wanted to. No, like I factored it out so I didn't have to. Like I divided out the negative 3, a negative there. So I didn't have to. OK. Now let's write the domain. So the domain of this function would be from negative infinity. My two um, discontinuities are at negative 3 and 3. So it would be negative infinity to negative 3, union, negative 3 to 3, union, 3 to infinity. 